everyone. Welcome to another episode. Of <laughs> I like that. The Vulcan wave. That's I, good. That, it made sense <laughs> it at made, the time. It did. So. It's, it makes sense still, <laughs> even though the time was only a few seconds later. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to the first 10 Forward Weekly of 2019. Um, for those of you tuning in for the very first time, my name is Mike Fainham. I am your community manager, also known as Ambassador Kel. And we do have Captain Gecko coming, as promised, later. But first, uh, I've got a little bit of a surprise for you. Hi, Weston. Hi. Hey, everyone, it's our animator, Weston. Yeah. Well, I went out of focus when I cheered for you. Does that happen every time? I have no idea. Ah, ah, yeah, it looks like it's okay. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> all right, cool. Never cheering again. <laughs> um, and we have you on because uh, there was something in the patch notes that uh, actually surprised both you and I because we thought it wasn't coming until the anniversary. Yeah. But, um, uh, there's been a, a project you've been working on for a while. Uh, do you want to tell everybody about it? Yeah, so a little bit of a side project I've been working on besides everything else is... The Doomsday device is getting something special. Tomorrow. Several several special somethings, in yes, fact. Yes, several uh, special somethings. Yeah, so um, for those of you who don't know, um, Wesson, who is responsible for the amazing cutscenes we've been having on our newer episodes, uh, has been going back and uh, working on a lot of... Um, the older episodes of the game. Um, uh, here and there when you have free time, so it hasn't yeah. been a, a flood of stuff, but we, we specifically had you go in and work on Doomsday Device because it's a really cool mission, but the cutscenes are just kind of like one shot. Like they very they were very old. Yeah. yeah, they were very, very old. Um, so uh, we wanted to show off some of your work and have you talk about it. I'm going to flip over to this with sure, game absolutely. screen here. Uh, what do you think is the first one we should show off? Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, wherever you want to start. I numbered them in the, the order the they order. appear in the episode. Yeah, the okay. What do you think is the, the biggest, like, wow, that's different? Oh, absolutely. Uh, gee, I can't remember what that was. Uh, definitely the finale is okay. the biggest one. All right, so let's take a look at how this used to look. So first of all, this is um, this is the original cutscene, and you'll hopefully be yeah. able to hear it. Uh, actually, you won't because I did this. So this is how this used to look. This, this is this cutscene, if I'm remembering from... What our, what our system story was made back in 2010. So. <laughs> oh, yep, standing on his chair. Yeah. 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 <laughs> classic. Classic. Recording, well, the thing is it's that a lot help, of problems we'll like that okay. originate because of how we switched over to, and to Captain, System 2.0 a couple yeah. years launch. ago. And how our game handles animations, walk. especially in cutscenes, changed I'll put it on drastically. The main screen. Turn this down a little bit so they can hear us over the excessive click on singing Stay that's about to occur. Are. Yes. Um, so this is this is the for those of you who haven't played this mission Kavalk, before. This is the uh, epic sacrifice of uh, Captain Kavalk, who My is about to fly his no ship punches. directly into the uh, uh, mouth of the Doomsday no, Device while epically this. singing a song of Klingon on honor, uh, and it's pretty sweet. Back when I first played this Farewell. episode. In 2012, I remember thinking this was one of the coolest moments it in the entire really game, is. especially at least in the first arc. Yeah, it really is really cool. Um, but you're right, I mean, look at this. This is, you know, it's you can see old. this shot of a ship flying through space whenever. Uh, spoiler alert, he flies into it and it explodes. Why don't we take a look at what you've done? Drag this. Whoa, this already was cool. We're going to drag it into place. There we go. Now it's visible. Oh my god, that scene of destruction. Yes. Look at all that beautiful destruction. <laughs> so we used... I used a lot of, uh, of new tricks that I've learned over the, over the time of working on Victory's Life and Age of Discovery. Um, and brought them kind of to, uh, to, together to help make these new revamped cutscenes for, uh, for the Doomsday device. Yeah. So it's the original voice Stay acting. It's just we've given the characters oh, a lot more like emotion and uh, Cabal, uh, uh, you know around. interesting camera movements killed. and things like that. My Although, did you make his face look no better, or is it just the camera angle that makes his face look better? Probably the camera angle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Caval has an age today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's <laughs> fine. Clean to life. Yeah. Though I also, though uh, you were mentioning about the voiceovers, yeah. while the voices are the same, there is a lot of new sound effects. It, the sound has also been enhanced thanks to uh, to Michael and Drew. They did an amazing job on this as well. I expected what you were saying to last longer. It took a big drink of water. <laughs> uh, but yes, now we have now we have a build up, and then you can actually see him chanting along with the, uh, the clips on the song. Uh, and actually exploding, which 
times. You didn't last time, I believe it was just kind of like no. The, what, actually, what happened is you saw the ship explode and you watched the explosion for a good twenty seconds That's before right. it changes. <laughs> oh, now you get an emotional finishing, reaction sir. from your captain, which is awesome. But it's still uh, active. Yeah. So yeah. Captain. We still have the whole um, oh, torpedos. Apparently they it might still be enough to finish the job. The machine's hull is solid. That's not right. That is not right. At Wait, did Klingons get in to Neverwinter? Oh no, did we just confirm and that? The <laughs> did we accidentally let people know that Neverwinter was the becoming a Star Trek game? To help distract it, but we need to be careful. Uh, like, if we're in front of it when it fires its anti-proton beam, we won't fare uh, any better than that uh, moon did. Your three questions answered. Okay. Yes, we're done. So yeah, um, that is the finale now. So if you go and play uh, Doomsday Device, that's what it's going to look like. Well, not night for now. No, sorry, tomorrow. Tomorrow. The other one that I love <laughs> is um, is Bridge, the one with the the Klingon captain and the. Uh... Uh, I don't remember. Let's find out. Um, I think it is. It is not. It is not. I'm not sure what. This Although this is. one was very awkward Animal as damage, well. Captain. All <laughs> yeah. systems are functional. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I mean this is a little bit more you know cutscenes and less people standing on chairs, but yes. um, must have that is you know it, we're, we're seeing people's backs the all the time now. for reasons. I have the date. Uh, whereas now we've got this already more dynamic and interesting and cinematic uh, camera angles, even though the weird lighting effects are still happening. Scanning the generators now. Yeah. I have a, lo the a lot of this particular cutscene also, um, there was some dialogue at the beginning that just wasn't that, really relevant anymore, so it got trimmed to yeah. be cut down surface. a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was another question, uh, are you the same Weston from Delta Flight? <laughs> I don't well, know. Well, I'm not dead, so... No, there you go. Um, I'm trying to figure out where she, where she would have been. Um, um, that was a really cool scene. That would be Captain's Log. Captain's, okay. Yeah, so that's the first one. Okay, so yeah. this Captain's is how this initially looked. I have been Evil Klingon Lady monologues directly into the camera. That is the same camera position and angle that stays for a good minute and a half. It's, it's yeah. Just this. It's yeah. just this the whole time. Now let's take a look at what Weston did with it, which this is, this is one of my favorites, because this scene is just Captain's so Captain's personal log. Yeah. I have oh, it's a Targ. It's his little Targ bed. Officer. I really I'm enjoyed I'm getting the Targ in there. Cabal. Yeah. Just because we don't we don't he get to put creatures to in our cutscenes a whole lot. Cabal yeah. The They're usually like background survival. fodder in gameplay, there but also in actual cutscenes, we never really see them do anything. It actually was a bit of a challenge for me to figure out even how to hook up cinematic animations for one of these guys because we never do it. Is that another human in a in a No, no, not this time. No, not this time. Uh, not this time, thank yeah. uh, So somebody is uh, begging for Klingon dances. Look, Weston always has more dances to give, guys. <laughs> not in these cutscenes, but but there there will always be more dances. There will always be as long as Weston draws breath. <laughs> Uh, so when you're going through, because now you know you've done this for a couple of missions now. I know I saw one um, uh, for a uh, let's just say a tutorial mission for another faction, and leave it at that. Um, when you're going and you know improving older cutscenes, what's mm -hmm. the the process like for that? Well, um, it depends on what we're trying to do exactly. These were kind of just up to me since they were on my side project. So oh, okay. So this was stuff you did like in your free time? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. I had some free time uh, while waiting for stuff, and I was able to get these uh, get these out the door. Um, I looked at the original cutscenes of what the intentions were, what the dialogue was, and tried to just make it more cinematic, make it more dynamic as to what we were looking at, how the characters were reacting, how they would feel to what they're saying, rather than just what it was ten years ago, you know? So I know you went straight into animation, you weren't like, you don't have like a background in making films or anything like that, but how did you um, study like cinematic camera angles and stuff for animation? What was the, what was your inspirations, let's say? Um, a lot of, a lot of different movies and shows teach you a lot. Um, it's good to look at those kind of things, Star Trek in particular. Yeah. Um, Do you watch a lot of Star Trek episodes to get prepared for making cutscenes? At times, yeah, especially with uh, with all the Discovery things we've been yeah. doing lately. Yeah. And I also have to, you know, have to I have to blame our, our friend you Scott a lot for this because <laughs> he, he's taught me a lot about cinematography and stuff with all our storyboarding, yeah. which is what we do for 
more cutscenes like we did for the uh, the Age of Discovery tutorial. Right. And for the upcoming Mirror of Discovery stuff. Exactly. Which we can't talk too much about, but you've gotten to do some cutscenes for Captain Killy. Yes. How's that been? That has been the absolute best, most fun <laughs> thing. I, I have loved working with her. That is awesome. <laughs> yes. You get to play with evil dolls now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, let's see. Um... Uh, Wraith Shadow yeah, wants to know, um, is there any chance we can get a bit more I mean, love for melee animations and martial arts and style for combat? I'm guessing that's something that's on my radar. Okay. That's something on my radar, and I've been looking into ways to do that recently. But, uh, no promises yet, okay. but I'm looking into that. that. That is something I want to do. Uh, there's a lot of demands in chat for a tardigrade dance. I'm just putting that out there. Oh, I, I've already seen requests for that. I already have ideas. <laughs> oh, God. You guys have got to see. I'm saving it for the right time next <laughs> year. Um, maybe in April, but um, Weston created the best dance video I've ever seen in my life. We showed it at the company meeting. It, it's so good. It, and I won't say anything more about that because I wanted to spring it on you on Twitter at some point. But, oh my god, it's amazing. Uh, let's see. Um... <laughs> Kifilu says that uh, you need to sword fight me for sword animation references. Uh, I agree. Um, sword, swords at dawn, sir. Yes. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, so, uh, mm -hmm. for what, what made Doomsday a device the mission that we decided to jump into uh, for this particular update? To, to be you simple, to be frankly honest, because, because it was the next one on the list. <laughs> 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 I, I I am very slowly and methodically working my way through all the older up, old, all the older episodes and updating them with cutscenes. Okay, are you doing so, you know all fed and then all clean on, or are you bouncing back and forth? Right now, it's just Federation. Okay, but uh, I would love to go back to the Romulans yeah. at one point, um, yeah. the Klingons especially, since yeah. they're quite old as well. But that's that's why we had an update to uh, Stranded in Space. Then we had Diplomatic Orders, and now Doomsday Device, which is next on the list. Yeah. So after that, we're actually this is the last one for the the Klingon I mean, faction. Sorry, the Klingon war, war story arc. Um, I forget which one's next, but those are the ones I'll be tackling next. I'm sure eventually. chat will tell us what's next in yes. about five seconds. <laughs> as soon as the stream delay catches up. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Well, a lot of questions that are coming in are questions about when we're going to get ships. Weston, do you know when we're going to get ships? I, I can make up numbers, <laughs> but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weston's an animator, guys. Uh, he doesn't just control or decide when new ships happen. So those kind of questions won't happen. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um... The uh, SFC 100 wants to know about the uh, the missions that we've we pulled out with Age of Discovery pending a revamp. Are you working on the revamp for those missions, or is that kind of content handling that first, and then they'll come to you? I'm not exactly sure. Um, I'd imagine that I will be working on those eventually when we get to revamping those. Okay. So yeah. cool. I certainly want to. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, uh, Necroglobule, no. Anniversary content releases do not mean no I mean, more a frame that didn't, that hasn't existed for I'm going to rephrase years. that because the way I answered that question was really confusing. There will be giveaways for the anniversary. <laughs> uh, oh, um, Duncan Idaho says, thank you for the animation updates for dialogue windows. Those have been great for the foundry. Um, and uh, Drogan1701 says basically exactly the same thing. <laughs> I've been enjoying making those, especially for our great yeah. characters. Uh, someone says there's looping audio. Oh, yeah, I bet there is. Oh, is the video still playing? This is... Yeah. Oh, no, that's muted. Is blending okay, well, we'll just kill this. No more echo! No. <laughs> uh, people are saying they hope you never leave Cryptic because your work is so good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So what was your favorite part about working on this mission? Definitely the, the final cutscene. Yeah, that um, makes sense. What was fun about that, mainly, was getting it to work with the music. Um... It sounded very droning at first, but after you start to listen to it, you can really hear that whoever recorded that, I don't remember who, yeah. but they were really into that, and they did a really good job with it. Um, yeah, it's one of the best, like, just random yeah. performances in the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, we were, I, I loved being able to, to bring the passion that was in that song to the actual cutscene compared to what it was originally. Yeah. And I love the transition you do of... Um him exploding to the reaction of the, the Federation officer on the ship. That's a really nice, like, dip-to-white transition. 
Uh, Gwyndolmir, uh, we're talking about the updates to um, Doomsday Device, which will be hitting uh, P uh, PC on live tomorrow, and apparently are on Triple right now. So if you want to go check out Triple, you can play it now, or just wait until tomorrow. It'll be there. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, uh, Firefly Zero Zero wants you to make some emotes from Metal Gear Solid Five, specifically Ocelot's double pistol twirl. <laughs> Uh, is it difficult to make realistic mouth movement to match cutscene dialogue, Drogon1701 says? Absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> we don't have... Well, I mean, I could probably do it in Max if I figured out how, but yeah. um, we don't have a very good way to like scrub through our cutscenes, so actual lip sync is very difficult. Um, it's trial and error, essentially. If I could... If I could do regular lip sync, I would have to import it into the game, play the cutscene, see what was wrong with it, then change that, and repeat that process however many times until it got right. Yeah. Um, the reason that it looked like it was in sync while he was singing, and another cutscene if you want to play that one too. Um, Which one? Uh, I think it's called Bavot Ground? Bavot Ground? Okay, let's see. Or Planet, Planet Bavot? Yeah, that's, that's it. Okay, I'll put this up. Um... And it was only for a single word, which was you at the beginning. <laughs> but getting it to sync is, uh, is very difficult. It was a lot of trial and error to do. That's why we have our, 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 our lip sync system, which is just a, a mouth moving right, system which while is, it. Well, here's a dialogue and kind of goes, ma, 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 yeah. ma, ma. Most of the time it works pretty well. Yeah, it yeah. works okay. Um, so, uh, what software do you use for animating? So you mentioned Max earlier. Is there a yes. back and forth between Max and our cutscene editor? Or? Um, we, so, I use 3DS Max um, to animate the, uh, the characters with the rigs. Um, those individual animations then get exported into a text file, which then imports into another text file, which imports into the cutscene <laughs> editor. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, but um, and the, no. the cutscene editor is very similar to Demo Record. Yes, right? actually it is. Yeah, um, at least the the interface to set up the cameras yeah. and things. But uh, we have a little few more controls. Yeah, where, I, would, I would hope yeah. so. <laughs> um, Warriors attack! We're out of here. Yeah. <laughs> so many cowardly Klingons. So little time. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that's how how it pretty much works. We use 3ds Max here at the studio for most things. And so, what do you do in Max, and what do you do in the cutscene editor? Like, what's the breakdown of work? Well, in Max itself, we actually animate them themselves. We take them from their you know usual T pose <laughs> or whatever, and animate the motions of the of them talking, of them doing an action, of a power or ability. When we get it into the editor, we place entities in the world that play those animations that we've made at specific times. That's why you can have your captain in the cutscenes itself. They're being played live. Got They're it. not pre-recorded. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, and so uh, uh, is there like the ti timeline then, is there like just animations that you're kind of slotting together in a timeline in our cutscene editor? Yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah, and it's a lot like a, a person made a, a joke a long time ago, I think it was Gregory, <laughs> who said that it was like a concerto piece <laughs> in that we have a ton of different lines and tracks and we put the animations in specific times on those tracks to coincide with each other yeah. so that it all plays as one thing. That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, and is there a lot of, like, previous animations that you can use, or do you have to recreate oh, all the animations? absolutely, absolutely. We, uh, we try to reuse as many animations as possible, since a lot of stuff we make is modular. Sort of like the, uh, you'd imagine, like the Telltale games yeah, sort of yeah. things, how they do. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's see, let's see. Um... <laughs> Blue Muzzy, I don't understand this question, but you might. Okay. Uh, it says, does 3DS Max use a graph editor or a dope sheet? Uh, both, but I like to use the graph editor because I don't know how to use the dope what sheet. Is, what <laughs> does that mean for those of us who aren't you? Oh, boy, that's... Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um... Boy, how do I go and explain this? Because that's an interesting thing to describe. Um, the graph editor is what we use to control the magnitude of motions. Okay. Um, if I move my hand from, okay, off, off the screen, from yeah. left to right, we will have different curves in the graph editor that describe um, how fast I move my arm, if it's faster on one side than the other, 
or the speed at which it does it and all so that So these are of actual, stuff. like, you, you type in a curve or you put yes. points on a it's curve. It's more visual it's like, where you can tweak the curves. It's like doing yeah. curves in Photoshop, but for motion? Yes, okay. exactly. Okay. And cool. you have cur uh, curves for every single type of motion, from translation to rotation, and all three axes, and also with scaling and other things, like at the face, where we have blinks and uh, mouth movements and things like that. Huh, okay. Yeah. So what's a dope sheet? I have no idea. I've okay. never been able to figure out how you use a dope sheet. <laughs> <laughs> I never learned how to do that, uh, so right. I use a graph editor. Good to know. <laughs> um, <laughs> So the mouth movements from NPCs, that, Mark Hoffman asked, so the mouth mm -hmm. movements from NPCs in a cutscene are a lot like creating a really long emote and hoping it plays at the right speed to match the dialogue? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> we, uh, With our system, at least, um, we have a singular animation that blah, 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 that kind of stuff. And I'm it just sorry, plays... what is the animation? <laughs> oh, I'm going to need to see that again. I didn't quite get it the first time. That was, that was, that was the point. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, uh, that plays on a loop whenever audio peaks over a certain point. Um, other games tend to have like vizemes or something, so like an ah shape for whenever it hears like an A sound or, okay. or an O or P or anything like that. But um, ours is the other, so. Okay. Yeah, so it is kind of like a very long emote. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, Q Fula says, you kids today and your fancy tools for making animation easy. <laughs> Um, how many uh, the blue buzzy wants to know how many bones slash joints in the face are used? Uh, Forty six. Next question. <laughs> I will get back to you on that because I got to think for a moment about that. All right. So, While he's thinking, we'll all sing the Jeopardy theme. Oh boy. There's got to be at least like thirty five okay. or so. I uh, think. And then he asked, do you get to use deformers like clusters, blend shapes, and lattices? I think Blue Muzzy might be an animator. <laughs> I, 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 that, that's something I've never gotten to do here. Okay. That, uh, I don't know how to do that in Max. I know that Maya can do that a lot. We did that a lot at, our, at my last company. Okay. But um, in Max, we, we don't use that for our rigs. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, Magic Man 79 wants to know if you'll buy him dinner if he dresses up nice? Yes. Okay. That's, that's a yes? You're good. <laughs> Uh, I can't b I believe you can afford to buy someone dinner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, okay, well, Duncan Idaho was trying to sing the Jeopardy theme in text. <laughs> well, that's, I love that. That's great. Yes. You can just put that into one of those voice-to-text things. Like on, on... Do, 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 yes. do. <laughs> it's like I used to play Unreal Tournament 2004 all the time, and it never understood... Um, uh, GG meant good game. I don't remember mm -hmm. what it said instead, but it would always be like, Gene, Gene. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Blue Muzzy says he's a Maya boy and he's jealous of Max's <sighs> rigging because he ignores history issues that Maya has. Yes. Like, Max and Maya are, uh, they're interesting twins from <laughs> different families. Um, <laughs> I definitely took a Maya class in college, um, yeah. but I don't remember any of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, everything I'm trained in was with Maya. That's yeah. what I was taught back at Animation Mentor and we used it my last job. And I've, I've used it constantly. It's really good in terms of animation, and I think a little better from Max in terms of animation. But Max is really great for modeling, for rigging. It's it's an interesting dynamic between the two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's it's a good balance. How much do you do a lot of modeling on your own, or are you mostly just working with stuff that Ian sends you? Usually just stuff with Ian sends me. But yeah. I have done some modeling. I don't know how to almost at all in Max, but I was. <laughs> Halfway decent at it, Maya. So. All right. Well, that's got to translate perfectly, right? There's no yeah. way they'd have randomly confusing different commands. That yeah, it's not like they're both names. made from the same company and <laughs> don't have the same controls. So. <laughs> I remember uh, when um, the entire video editing industry switched from uh, Final Cut to Premiere, and I had to spend you know three months going, what do you mean that doesn't activate the blade tool? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh <laughs> Phenomenal last. I don't know if Weston will know this one, um, okay. but he he says, uh, "Is the mini cutscene and everything old is new again going to be updated so that the female officer no longer speaks with a male voice?" Everything old is new. We don't have that episode in the arc. Did we pull that out? I thought we did. Okay, so then it'll probably get updated when we update everything. Hey, that's fixed then. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, Orangitis, actually, this is an interesting question because he sort of jokingly asks, mind meld interaction animation when? But do you want to talk about how freaking difficult it was to get people to have interactive animations in with Victory yeah. is Life? Yeah. If I remember I remember you crying over hugs several times. <laughs> uh, the, the hug between Kira and Kyle Pocket was definitely uh, 
Very difficult. <laughs> Especially because they're like a foot difference in height. Yep. <laughs> but uh, the doing interactions like that between at least players can be very... We have to cheat on how we, how we show that because yeah. we can't do it with our current systems exactly the way you would expect. Yeah. Yeah. And doing two-person emotes are always weird to program anyway because it's like does one person click it and then you're forcing someone else to do an animation do you have to click it at exactly the same time like that's that's a that's a whole can of worms yeah yeah um (laughs) magic man 79 is apparently getting uh harassed by tuvok every time he uh he mind melts with him in that mission probably because his character is very tall (laughs) uh could you hit the lights yes they are on automatic timer and i don't know how to fix it it's behind the green screen there There you go uh, Kel MG96 wants a crane kick emote. Uh, I, crane kick, you know, crane sweep kick. the leg, Johnny. Are you too young oh, for this sort yeah, of thing? Yeah, I am. Weston is a tiny baby person. Uh, and sometimes we say things and then remember that he was born in, what, like 97 or something like that? 93. Oh, God. <laughs> You're only a year older than the Power Rangers. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um... I think we do have yeah. a sweeping kick, though. We, we probably do in the martial arts thing that nobody yes. uses. Yeah, yeah. That, one, that one kit module. Yeah. Systems like, told me about that the other day, and I didn't even know it existed. <laughs> <laughs> I had it on my character for a while, because I was like, oh, I'm mostly a melee character. This will be fun to activate, and it was not fun to activate, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, uh, Oranditis says MMPR was 93. Um, sure. But I don't know. Probably. Okay. <laughs> so you're as old as Power Rangers then. <laughs> Are you 25 years old last year? Yes. Okay, then you're as old as Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> I may be a bit of a Power Rangers fan, you guess. Anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, we do need a mic dropping mode. That's very important. Yes, uh, I would love to do that. I, I actually have always wanted to invent, like, a... Um, Spider-Man uh, inflatable microphone wrist thing that you could wear so you just like press a button and it inflates a microphone so you can drop it whenever you want we could totally do that we could totally do that in game <laughs> yeah. I'm talking in real life but yes talking, we could totally do that in game <laughs> Sir Boulevard says that you could hurt me if you if you drop me that's a good point <laughs> this mic drop anyway <laughs> and lots of people are suddenly now now handing me uh, uh, the dragon dagger and talking about summoning dragon zord in chat which is great i have two dragon daggers at home maybe i'll bring them in sometime <laughs> uh let's see um duncan idaho you should finish the start of a power rangers parody episode in the foundry uh you should do that okay blue muzzy's got another technical question excellent blue muzzy sure. thank you uh he says do you have anchor points on other characters that help that could help with two character interaction animations Kind of. Um, we use that with our guns and rifles. That's why if you're like holding a rifle, the other hand will be at a specific point, or like especially if you have like a two-handed weapon. Yeah. Um, that's very difficult to do with other characters, though. We'd have to orchestrate a new system to accommodate that. Yeah. But uh, the, the tech does exist for that kind of thing in a, that sort of way. Uh, I'm going to rephrase Wayward Horizons' question here. What was your the most challenging thing you've animated in STO so far? Uh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> See, what Weston does is like sticking uh, several pieces of uh, garbage together with duct tape and <laughs> hoping they make a beautiful picture. <laughs> no. I know. I know what the most challenging thing was. What was it? It was... Dukon Rex's body being laid down by the Herc at the end of home. Oh. That was incredibly difficult. Oh, man. Because I kind of had to do what Duncan Idaho was sort of saying and using points in Max. Oh, that was Muzzy, but to, yeah. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, my bad then. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, to move the hip bones as this core of the character and then animate the rest as if it were physics object by hand keying it. Good God! That I don't that animate. Took it, that took a while. Terrifying. <laughs> that took a while. Oh man! <laughs> uh, um, uh, okay, Sequest thirty sixty two um, <laughs> says, "I hate to ask, but how does Weston get those awesome face animations in the Discovery tutorial?" I'm assuming he's uh, talking about the things that uh, I used for the screaming cowboy video. You know, you're. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, no, just as a rule of thumb, I try to add facial animations to pretty much everything I do. Uh, we used not to just because we didn't have time. 
but I work very fast. So. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see, let's see. Um, uh, okay, Firefly Zero Zero says, speaking of rifle animations, would it be too much trouble to make the pulse waves match the other long arms in that regard? Uh, I think they're saying pulse wave rifles have weird hand placements, possibly, but I'm not entirely sure. They shouldn't. They should have the exact same rifles. Well, then we should uh, look at that! Yeah, I'll take a, I'll take a look at that. that. They should have the same handles as regular rifles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd imagine some are different, though. Yeah. So. Um, sorry, guys. I'm not talking a lot, taking a lot of um, Facebook comments because so far most of the Facebook questions have been, you know, when do we get ships? And again, Weston's an animator. He doesn't know the answers to those questions. And I, neither I, do I. I left the crystal ball at home. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when it comes time to touch up animations in Boldly They Road, will Curlin be auth- authentically boardified? I think they're asking if you'll turn him into Jeremy. <laughs> I, I, I very much doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 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 let's see. I love that the chemist thing. Yeah. Uh, Orangitis says, um, "Could docking animations use points in the costume, like weapon to, weapon uh, hard points use?" The only way I could see that probably happening is if you were able to. Well, We'd have to, I'd assume we'd probably have to use like a, a, a waypoint system for the actual entity of your ship and then calculate how far out from the docking port, like on the side of the ship, for example. But then I'd imagine for some ships, especially like Romulan Warbirds, that probably wouldn't work that well. Yeah. The thing is, we have so many ships in our game, especially, and that works oh for characters God. as yeah. well, is we can, it's very difficult to accommodate for every single one of them. Like, yeah, it's, I get so many bug, bug, bug requests and stuff saying, like, hey, the Enterprise J doesn't fit in this cutscene. <laughs> no You're kidding. Right. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> oh, God, we're going to give you a whole new headache in a couple of weeks. Uh, <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> uh, hold on, I'm just going to message Alan and see where the hell he is. I, I have a feeling he's possibly waiting outside because uh, we shut the door, but I don't know. Let me see. Uh <laughs> What's your your schedule like? You have to be out of here by five, you said. Yeah, I got okay, I got cool. I got head out by five. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I think I have Al from four thirty to five thirty. So, uh, can you make a cinematic for actually docking before transferring maps? Uh, so I will say, uh, unless that was skippable, it would be hugely unpopular within about two seconds, uh, because I know everyone gets frustrated with the half a second it takes to close the landing page, and we got complaints for the thirty seconds it takes that we've added to the beginning of Crystalline Catastrophe. So, <laughs> uh, if every time you docked with Earth Space dock you watched your ship pull into Earth space dock in a beautiful motion picture style cutscene uh people would be angry with us in about 10 seconds uh so maybe but i don't think it happened on everything but could you do that if you wanted to possibly though once again enterprise j <laughs> it doesn't fit through the doors it's literally as wide as her sp- space dock <laughs> um i i don't know Car- captain blade i think that may actually be a programming thing not an animation thing the grappling hook bug where it sometimes just doesn't detach and stays with you for the whole mission is that an animation thing or is that a it's kind i think that's kind of a systems thing kind of systems where thing, it doesn't yeah. delete the effect yeah afterwards yeah, yeah. Okay. Of, the, of the grappling hook yeah we have that for a few items <laughs> nemshake 90 wants to know when weston is getting moved to ships uh do you have <laughs> a- any desire or experience in that area <laughs> I don't want to touch ships with a ten foot pole. <laughs> we'll let we'll let Thomas and Donnie and Ian handle that. Yes, they are yeah. absolute wizards. I have no idea how, what kind of black magic they practice for that stuff. <laughs> Radioactivity says the Enterprise J is a better space station than Earth space dock. Don't at me. <laughs> uh, Wraith Shadow wants a ship animation of lo- launching someone out of an airlock torpedo tube. Uh, I don't know where that would appear in the game. Can we but... do that for April Fools? <laughs> we wanted that last time. Remember? Oh my god, that should be. Um... A new engine effect for April Fools. Yes. Just you're just shooting at boffs out the ba- boffs out the back to make you go faster. <laughs> uh, Data five hundred uh, two. You're getting two episodes on the twenty third, just like it says on the uh, uh, in the blog post. Um, Duncan Idaho will make the best ships with crayons. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, Gwendolmere, uh, the things you're talking about with ship animation, you do do that that stuff, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Is that, but that's mostly for new ships with which have animations. Which we haven't done a lot of ships with moving parts. Uh, Not a whole lot recently. Yeah, the most recent one. Well, the most recent one actually was Discovery. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you did do the spinning um, uh, saucer. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for for that. Yeah. Uh, I think that was see. the most recent one. 
Yeah. Yeah. A T six Mon Calamari Star Cruiser with a it's a trap console. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, people want to air uh, space tow van, Kev. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sir Boulevard says, speaking of ship animations, how goes the search for the intrepid nacelles to work again? I I need to get with systems to figure out a way to f- fix that, but I've got a pretty good game plan to fix that okay. as soon as we can. All right. the, the problem is the, the, the nacelles on ships worked differently like six or so seasons ago (laughs) and then we changed how the animation systems in sector space work and it kind of broke that oh it got fixed as best we could a lot of ships work fine it's just like it's the intrepid and a few other specific ships that don't okay all right good to know uh so this is actually you're probably uh, following up on your, oh my god, there's so many different sized ships. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Nebshake is asking if there's any way to improve the warp out animation so like certain large ships don't have the camera flying inside them and things like that. I'd like to be able to do that someday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, that's not one of those things where you can just magically make it detect the ship, right? You'd have right. To, you'd have to, well, I, but you'd have to basically redo it for every ship in the game, or is there no, a way No, no, to... no. Uh, I mean... It works for 90% of the ships in the game. It's only like the big, big ships that have a really big problem. Mm-hmm. Um, different ships are actually classified different in our game. Um, like escorts are classified as small. Regular cruisers are usually medium to large. And, well, the Enterprise J is gigantic. <laughs> um, so but using a system we call stance words, we're able to determine which animations get to play based on which stance word it looks at, which is the small, medium, gigantic. Uh, okay, so if there's something that says large or gigantic, you could tell it to pull the camera further away. Exactly, but that's currently not set up to the way warp out cutscenes work. Got it. So we could look into that in the future, though. Is that also why the Klingon warp out cutscene has been broken for, you know... You see, Eight years. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with that because I was testing that today. Actually, I couldn't, I couldn't replicate it. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come, come to my computer, okay? Uh, because it literally happens every time I warp out. Okay, you need to show me that. Yeah, I will show I, it to I you. Want, I, want, I want to fix that. Yeah, it's it's pretty funny. Um, Sequest says uh, we need to ask for a cinematic with Emperor Gior- Giorgio's sword. Absolutely. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Way, Way War Horizons is asking for the Enterprise JJ, which is the Enterprise J, but from the Kelvin timeline. What would that even look like? Uh, it would be a giant lens flare floating you, in space. You beat me to the jaw! <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> it! <laughs> <laughs> Victory is life. Uh, um, Orangitis, is it possible to remove Intrepid Nacelle animations to be changed via the tailor? No. <laughs> well... Thomas wouldn't like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and say no, because I know the answer to that. Uh, Don Bat, uh, there is a lens flare slider in the game. Uh, if you go to the Calvin Bridge, it's set to max, and if you go to anywhere else, it's not set. Sorry. That was it. Uh, just use um, the bloom setting. Don't tell anyone. Uh, Caladria says, still no chick dance. What? What? I th- is she talking about the chicken dance? Maybe think, a chicken dance. I think that that's be... a thing over in Champions. Okay, all right, all right. Um, I technically have that animation still. <laughs> I'm waiting for the right occasion for it. Yeah. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, no chicken dance because there's no chickens in STO. But yeah, that's fair. Um, you know what's actually really funny about that? What? You, Steve Stacy. he yeah. has always wanted to add chickens as a pet in our game. In STO? Yeah. Why? I'd have no idea. Okay. <laughs> Did you know that uh, chicken poop is used to feed cows? I do now. Mm-hmm. Yep, Thank that's you. something I Thank learned today. Yeah, I'm Thank glad you. you knew. Now just think of how much of your hamburgers are chicken poop. Mm. And I'm still going to eat them because they're delicious. I'm glad I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Um... <laughs> Can you see the one? I thought we already had the Picard maneuver tugging emote. Yeah, we do. We do. That's, yeah, we totally uh, do. I know. Tug, I think it's Yeah, just I think it's a, called Tug, which yeah. every time I see in the email list, I go, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Phrasing. Uh, how about a mission on a planet full of chickens, Zion Sears says. Good I idea. Love, Let's do that. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, 
<laughs> uh, Flyer, Firefly00 says the Twitch auto mod clears incapable of determining context. This is accurate. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, all right. Takifu uh, <laughs> says he's going to spend all day tugging his captain tomorrow, so there. <laughs> You had to start. It. <laughs> <laughs> I did start that. All right. Well, um, it looks like we're getting. Uh, okay. Well, here's one. Can we get a variation of Lex sunglasses flick as an emote? I, I have tried so many ways to figure out how I can do that. That's going to be a thing someday. So but... it had to. It had to be like the glasses come on and then just fade away because your character doesn't actually have glasses. Yeah. <laughs> well, technically, I can yeah. make them stay on for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Zell MG ninety six wants a Riker maneuver emote where we just spawn a chair and then sit on it. <laughs> I think that's yep. We could just have the chair beam in. Oh my yeah. word! Okay, you're giving me an idea. Thank you. Uh, Sergeant Zaynor mm -hmm. actually has a really interesting idea. Um, mm -hmm. I have a feeling this would be quite a bit of work, um, okay. but they're wondering if we could create a uh, photo area where you could beam down your crew and put them in different poses. Take I have wanted to do that for Ryza. You know? Yeah, it I, does feel like a very yeah. Ryzen thing. Yeah. I would love. I would love to do that sometime. That we should. Is... We should talk about how we can yeah. make that happen. Step one: Go to Jared's desk and say, "Give Weston two weeks on the schedule to do something fun that has no benefit to the game whatsoever." <laughs> ha ha ha! That would be really cool. Actually. Yeah. Oh, I thought we already had a flossy mode. Didn't you make a flossy mode? Yes, I did. Is it in the game yet? Yes, I, I thought so. Yeah. I think. I think it was during the summer event. That yeah. We so gave that there out. you go. Dabby mode already exists. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, Tim Hughes would love that for the Bridge Engineering deck, too. Uh, possibly. Um, making stuff for your individual ships is harder because everybody's individual interior is its own map, which is why we have never done a mission on your ship. Because, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. uh, that'd be hard. Uh, let's see. Uh, da -da -da -da. Um, I'm not sure what a Captura system is. Do you know what a Captura system is? No. Okay, if someone says a Captura system would be the greatest in I addition to the game ever. We do have Demo Record, which there are wonderful tutorials on how to use that online. Uh, and yeah. People make really awesome things, uh, like ZEF uh, and his ship videos, and uh, Snipey47 and his ship videos. And yes. Demo Record's awesome. Yeah. Morshita does all of her screenshots in Demo <laughs> Record. It's, it's pretty great. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mar Hawkman says, for warp out animation, maybe set cam distance based on hitbox radiance? Hmm. You've given Weston an idea. Yes, you did. Oh my, that's some, that's interesting, actually. I haven't considered that. I'll have to, ch I'll have to look into that. <laughs> that's, thank you. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It's the uh, Captura is the photo mode of Warframe. Warframe! Uh. I have to do that every time now. Uh, any plans for STO and VR? Uh, no, um, honestly, because um, what you're asking for, I think, is being able to play STO from a first-person VR perspective, which would be completely remaking the game. Uh, in terms of being able to play the game with a VR headset, I think you can do that now. I think there's programs that will cast from like Steam and things to yeah. just uh, make it like your own you know, home theater inside your virtual reality he headset. Um, that sure would get disoriented quickly. It would, I think yeah. you would see a screen and then. Like, yeah, I know, like, but that's literally everything you're seeing. Well, no, I mean, like, so. you know, have you ever watched a movie in VR? No. They usually build like a room, so like you go into oh. like the Netflix oh. room and like sit on a couch and watch a giant screen, oh, okay. which that is could, actually really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could work with them. Yeah. Uh, any chance on bringing back some of the older event rewards? Uh, yes, always. We're gonna put them in the Phoenix box. It's just a question of whenever Systems has time to add more stuff to the Phoenix box. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, hair animations. That is something I'd really like to do. And actually, we recently increased our bone count in rigs, so that Ooh. could be something in the future. Ooh. I'd we like to give, be able to do that. We should give uh, Killy some hair blowing in the wind during yes. the explosion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see. Um, uh, yeah, interiors on console, it's just one of those things, um, I, I've, I've mentioned this on the stream before, but... Um, uh, basically, they ran out of time for the console launch uh, to finish upgrading all the lighting and stuff for them, um, and then uh, I just haven't had the time to come around and fix everything to make them ready for console. Um, we hope to get to it someday. It's one of those questions of time and team and things of that nature. Um, let's see. 
All right. Um, it looks like we are now out of animation questions, and people are just throwing random things at me. Uh, so I will let you get back to work, and I'll just fire up the game while we wait for right. Al. Thank you so much for coming. Absolutely. Um, Thank you for having me again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, anytime, man. Anytime yeah. you want to come on. Keep making awesome cutscenes for us. Okay. I Peace. can't wait to see your... Because uh, I haven't actually played the new missions yet. I can't wait to see the uh, the ones for Captain Gilly. I'm oh, really you're excited. Gonna, you're going to have fun with those. Yeah. You're, gonna, yeah. you're all going to love it. You're all going <laughs> to love it. So let me fire up the game here. Uh, Streaming Hawk Foundry for PC is already back. Uh, it's been back for a little while, so go check that out. I'm just gonna. Oh, hello. Okay. My room is haunted. BRB. I'm just gonna leave the door open here so Al knows to come in whenever he gets here. I'll see if I can find him. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you. I'm guessing his meeting probably ran over, but um, while we wait, we'll fire up the uh, the STOs and play a little bit with you guys, because it's been a while since we've done that. And let me change this back to me. do 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 Yeah, I am. I did turn a little orange when I stood up. I, the, the color balance on these Logitech webcams is a little weird. Um, I freely admit. Uh, I see that DSM87 moved from Facebook to Twitch to uh, see if I would answer his question about Enterprise captains. Um, as of right now, I'm just going to do random, some random cues. Uh, as of right now, we aren't planning on doing any Enterprise Era Federation or Klingon stuff. Uh, Ryan Kelly, can I have an STO Discovery t-shirt? Uh, I don't have any in here right now. Next time I do a giveaway, remind me. Hey, I'm sitting in this uh, particular uh, orbit because this is where the start of our Foundry Challenge winner is, which I need to make a spotlight mission. Uh, Zachary Ash, any update on when Battle of Binary Stars is coming to console? Uh, yes, there is an update. You will find out that update this week. Uh, Sir Boulevard, I agree. Klingons are in need of more birds of prey because the birds of prey, the bird of prey, is the prettiest ship to exist. Uh, we are, they are getting the Discovery bird of prey um, soon uh, because we've got that already. But in terms of variations on the classic, uh, yeah, there's more to come. All right, let's blow up some Klingons with my Klingon. It's weird. Don't think about it too much. Yeah, in terms of recreating classic ships, I know we're going to be on Discovery ships for a little while and Discovery-related things just because... That's what we're doing for everything for a little bit. Wow, I got hammered at the start of this mission. Let's turn that around. Um, uh, and so, you know, I think the next couple of Klingon ships you see will be Discovery ships. Discovery Klingon ships. Um, partially because we've already got them made. You know, there's the um, the ones that we made for Starbase 1 and Battle of the Binary Stars. Uh, and so turning those into player ships is... Uh, a uh, bit of a priority. Um, I don't think, like I like with the Romulan ships, we're not going to stop making them. We're going to make more Romulan and more Jem'Hadar ships and more Klingon ships. Uh, but you know, we're we're just in a bit of a discovery run right now. I think you guys will be really excited by what's coming in the next lockbox. Uh, it's n not a ship you've seen before, but at the same time, it kind of is. And I hope that makes sense. Uh, yeah, for the people who are asking, the uh, fill all button has made it to triple and we'll be making it to PC tomorrow. You will be able to go into your reputations and uh, just press fill all and put everything in there that you want, which is 
So exciting. I'm so glad we're finally doing that. So many clicks will be saved for me. Oh, yep, someone in uh, Twitch chat has gotten it right. Uh, starting with the anniversary, you will be flying a Tier 6 Edible Kelpian. Oh yeah, we're doing we're doing uh, editable Kelpians. That's the lockbox ship for uh, for Mirror Discovery. Uh, I asked them to guess. That was a guess. So that's they were right. They got it on the nose. We're flying a bowl of Kelpian soup, that's, right? Uh, uh, that's that's uh, that's my favorite dish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was—I I, I totally want to get. I, I can't do it, but I really want to have like a Kelpian food and have triples eat it and forget <laughs> something. <I don't> know. <laughs> oh. All right, I'm putting your nameplate up here. Hooray! It's the right side. Never. <sighs> uh, I jumped into a, a Starbase. That's why I apologize for being late. We had That's a. Okay. Uh, 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 it called into an emergency meeting with the CEO, and those are just things you just. You kind of got to do those, gotta things. Do those yeah. things. Yeah, um, well, it's okay. We talked to uh, Weston about the new Doomsday Device cutscenes and showed those off, which are oh. super exciting. Oh yeah, uh, I'm really, I'm really happy, uh, excited to play through that mission again and see all those in context. But the Klingon singing cutscene is it's so, so good. good. It's so good. So good, dude. Uh, so yeah, hey, we're uh, we announced Mirror Discovery this morning. How's that feel to finally get that that uh, out in the open where you can talk about it? Oh, those always feel good, right? You want to sit on those, and there's always all those things you want to talk about, and 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 it happened to be very fortuitous that just landed up that we announced it the same day, or that we uh, had Mary Wiseman recording with Was us. Was Mary Wiseman recording in the studio today? Not did him. Mike know this and keep his lid, keep lid on it so <laughs> Al can announce it? Yes, Mike did. Did you bring a clip? I got clips. You got clips. I got clips. I haven't I haven't parsed through them to see if there's. I don't want to put too many spoilers. Yeah, no. Of course. Oh, I've got two percent battery left in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Anyone, anyone got a, 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 a charger up here? Charger? No, no, not at all. Uh, email them to me. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll wait until you finish your thing so we can then then I'll just then I'll put put them right up on the mic or something. Well, you can put them on the mic now while I'm playing. Mm, you know, okay. They'll just play through. All People right. Can hear Let's them. see. Two percent battery. Oh, people are saying emergency CEO me meeting with the CEO. Doom. Can you assure people <laughs> that it wasn't Doom for me, real quick? It was not Doom. It was we just had some. Uh, it, it wasn't even really an emergency. It was just uh, it was just ran late, and we were we were actually just talking about metrics and and things that sell. And Which looking, is looking been, at all our numbers and how uh, awesome our numbers. From were. what I've seen, it's been real, real good. We've been stupid. Uh, I keep telling good. people we've it, except for like one year, this was like the best year STO ever had, right? Something like that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like, crazy. Uh, for a nine-year-old game. Yeah, for a nine-year-old nine game. game. Like, That's oh my just gosh. ridiculous. We're destroying our targets. It's great. Let's see. I want to make sure I don't... don't, don't sure, 2% like battery. 2% battery, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just point that out there. And I, I want a good one. I want a good line. All right. I, 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 uh, I'm going to go to you one. Just, sure Your phone's going to die. Gonna die. And they're going to hear nothing. Hear and it's going to be terrible. <laughs> People are saying we can't discuss upcoming doom. That is correct. Nothing, nothing. I'm sure the science behind all of this is fascinating, but we have some more immediate concerns to address, namely the Klingon boarding parties running wild on my ship. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, Michael Henry. That was great. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. If, can they even hear that? I don't know. Could you guys hear that? I, I, someone just yeah. commented Tilly in Twitch chat, so maybe. Folks, folks, could people hear that? Can anybody hear that? No, yep, people are saying they heard it. Yeah. Okay. All, all right. right. So all that right. was your first tease of Captain Killy. We'll put that up on Twitter later. I might even let Al, um, you know, know, put it on his own Twitter. For a I want to. I want to get something sinister from her. She has some great, great sinister, sinister Tilly. Face to face at last. Language. Oh, I don't want to spoil that one. That's too fun. <laughs> they may have heard that. <laughs> it may already be spoiled, but that's okay. Al, I let a ship get destroyed while I was talking to you. You let a you let you let, let a ship. One of the ship gets, ships get destroyed. Wasn't paying attention. Did you hit your head in that fight? I think what I can risk killing. That's a nice. Here we go. Makes it. Did you hit your head? Let's see. Hopefully you're. Did you? 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 Fight. Did you hit your head in that fight? I think what I have to gain here is pretty obvious. Everything. Pavo's reach is infinite. After a few more demonstrations of its power, everyone in the quadrant will have no choice but to swear allegiance to me. Or, you know, die. Emperor Stilly. 
It has a nice ring to it, don't you think? Oh, I can't wait. Oh, that's delicious. I've seen some of these scenes, but I haven't heard uh, Mary doing them before. That's that's wonderful. <laughs> no. This is this is my this is this is my uh, my Bruce Campbell the Bruce Campbell line. I love this one. Sane, insane. I'm the one calling the shots here, and I'm pretty sure I told you to get lost or get wrecked. <laughs> 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 Did she just say get wrecked? Yeah. Oh, Paul's had too much fun with this. It's the uh, good, bad, I'm the one with the gun yeah. kind of line. Yeah. Shop yeah. smart, shop S smart. <laughs> All right, so Mirror Discovery. Let's talk about it a little bit. What was the, was it, it, was the first thought you had when you knew you were getting Mary Wiseman that we have to do Captain Killy at some point? Um, I think that before we got Captain Killy, uh, before we got Mary Wiseman, we knew we had <laughs> Captain Killy in the game. Yeah. I mean, she's, Captain, you know, Mary, Tilly as Captain Killy in Discovery is... It's one it's of only, the best parts of season it's, one. Yeah, it's like the best part of season one. It's yeah. only like 30, you know, I don't know, two minutes in the show. It's only a couple lines that yeah. she's there. She does, first she does the bumbling one on the comm, and she's like, hold, hold, hold your horses, and then she's like completely uncomfortable, and then they dress her up, and she goes on screen, and pulls the, uh, if you talk to me like that, I'd rip out your tongue, tongue. and use it to lick my boot. <laughs> yep. And it's like, it's the amazing, and her performance in that is amazing, since we, we had to get that. And so, um, yes, as soon as, as, as when we when we decided that, you know, we could try to get uh, Mary Wiseman in the game, says, well, we're going to Mary Wiseman, we're going to have to have her play both roles, and yeah. we have to figure out a way to make the story so that way, how do we get Captain Killy in our game, right? Uh, we knew that at some point we would have um, since Mirror Universe, the Terrans were such a big part of uh, of the show of Star Trek Discovery. It was a yeah. huge part of the show. It's it's kind of the whole you know large point of it in Lorca's story. So um, we had to do one of our releases about the Terran. Um, and I know everybody wants the uniforms, right? Uh, Everyone's, what? Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. about. So it's all real popular. So we just themed the whole thing about, uh, you know, about Terrans and the uniforms and all the weird stuff the, and technologies they have. Are you saying that the upcoming lockbox might be a Terran-themed lockbox? S something like that. Maybe. They're, they're, we like to theme all our stuff together, so... Have we not talked about that? We haven't talked about the Emperor's Lockbox, no. except that I uh, accidentally called oh, it the Emperor's, Emperor's Lockbox, lockbox like three, in the... Three, three seconds ago? It was, yeah, because <laughs> I, I, in the YouTube description, I oh, put Emperor's okay. Lockbox. I didn't put it anywhere else. Yeah. And so a lot of people have been like, wait, wait, wait. What does that mean, Terran stuff? So I just figured I'd let yeah. you confirm it. Yeah, it means yeah, Terran it's stuff. Terran. It's a lock, we're going to get the Terran, uniforms. There's a Terran really cool lockbox. ship coming that we're not going to talk about today. Uh, but it's really... like I told, What I did tell them earlier about the ship was that it's a, a ship they've seen before, but not a ship they've seen before. It is a ship they've seen before and not a ship they've seen before, and uh, um, but it is, it's all Terran. Yeah, it's all Terran. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, so. I've, I've actually just seen the ship get checked in today. You're not Weston. Uh, and it's, it, boy, does it look cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I won't say too much. Yeah, we don't want to say too much, but it's, <laughs> it, too much it's cool, it's huge, it's awesome. Um, okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about um, what was the decision-making process like? Because we, you know, we've just introduced the new Discovery faction. We've given them their two missions and then uh, jumped them forward uh, to 2410. But there was the possibility that we could have done this story arc, you know, in between Secrets and Downfall and kept it in the Discovery era. Yeah. Why did we decide to put it in 2410 instead? Um, because we're trying, we're 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 actually going to be building two story arcs in Star Trek Online for Discovery. There's the starting story arc that is, you know, that that is well what we've seen so far, and we're going to keep building on that. I mean, the the goal would be to eventually, you know, ideally have at least ten levels of Discovery content. Right. If you if you start as a new character, you you get that. But um, but I don't want to tell this entire story, our entire Discovery story in. 2256. Thank you. We want to do, you know, we want to bring it into our prime time era so that way um, everyone can play it as opposed to just playing it in simulations, which is effectively yeah. what we're saying. It's like, oh yeah, just kind of do a simulation and see what this story, see what really happened back then. Why right. are you doing the simulations? Well, because you're trying to learn about the enemy that you about have to Jula. face, about Jula. Yeah. And so, so we want to still have that, you know, we've always said that Age of Discovery is an expansion over time. 
you know, we would have loved to have just built it as an expansion release it, but we just did our X4, right? Yeah. And turning and around and doing another expansion it, it on was top just, of that would have been it insane. would have been a, it would have been a year before we released it. Yeah. Right. So 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 we said let's just jump on this and let's take the take advantage of this opportunity and start releasing it now and and focus our game on discovery for a while. Um, and so so something for the new players that come in and have a you know someone who's maybe just learning about Star Trek or really just got back into Star Trek for Discovery and they see that Discovery experience, but all players, Klingons, Romulans, Jem'Hadar, Fed, existing 2409 Feds can also have their Discovery arc in 20, you know, 2409. Yeah. And so there will actually be two, uh, at some point, be two full journals of, uh, of, dis of, disco of Discovery sc you know, story arcs. And if you're a Discovery player, you kind of see it a little bit different perspective as you're anyone else, you're kind of looking at it in flashbacks, then then, then you know, dealing with these menaces, threats, um, stories that are happening in 2409, 2410. So does Jula figure into Mira of Discovery? Because she's the sign of the big overarching 2410 she is, threat? She, she, is, she is not part of... Uh, Jula will not be returning in uh, these next episodes of coming out with the anniversary in Mira Discovery. Um, but we like to have everything, yeah. you know, this coming this way and mm -hmm. then this coming this way mm -hmm. and then hopefully everything and comes together. And it all leads to the yeah. uh, Admiral Leader versus t uh, Captain Kelly Mirror Civil War, so, right? That so, I've just been <laughs> pushing you for? Just, yeah. just keep pushing that one until you do it? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, uh, Admiral Leader, yeah, sure. Admiral, Admiral Leader versus Captain Kelly. Yeah, and there's even another, and, and even for there's just one episode, I just want it. I just give it. Just can I have it, please? I just want them shouting against all the other 20 minutes. Is it, yes. Is it oh, God, forces? Yes. Well, maybe forces. they join forces at the end, but like... What about Georgia? I just want a scene of the two of them shouting insults at each other for like yeah. 10 minutes, yeah. 20 minutes. No, it's delicious. <laughs> it is. You think uh, we, yeah, I, put, I, see if we can get Chase and Mary in the same room. <laughs> I think we can make that happen. The question is whether or not we can get uh, Georgio. If we can yeah. get, oh, if, if, we can get, if we can get Michelle Yeoh. If we can get Michelle Yeoh. Um, I was so blown away because not only was she terrifying in Discovery, but I don't know if you saw Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, I have not she seen is, Crazy Rich Asians. She yet. is the most terrifying mother-in-law you could ever yeah. have in I that bet. movie. Uh, uh, yeah, I bet. Yeah, I was a big fan of Michelle Yeoh. Oh, yeah. I watched all her. I, which not, just, I was not, just, not just Crouching Tiger, but some yeah, of her yeah. older stuff that she did was just, you know... Yeah. She's, amazing. she's all self-taught, you know. Yeah. All her, all her. Yeah. It's all she's. She just self-taught. I don't. That's amazing. The, um. Uh. What was I gonna say? Um. These are my like karate. I, that's your karate things. moves. Yeah, which, karate. She does kung fu, not karate, <laughs> so that's even worse. But whatever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. The uh uh. I was just was gonna say I was shocked to discover at um, uh, STLV when they had the costume thing that she's like, this tall, like she is. Oh, she yeah, is, yeah. She is a tiny, she's, tiny person, sure. and she's the most well, intimidating person on the planet. Yeah. It's wonderful. <laughs> uh, people are saying Michelle Yeoh is the queen and then not queen emperor. You are absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we, we uh, want to uh, want to keep telling, telling, telling yeah. discovery stories, Terran stories uh, in our own way, right? Yeah. We do have, you know, I, I've, I've had a story arc in mind for a long time for... For, for Miralita, yeah. and, and like I certainly was not done with that story. Um, and so we were going to go in a different direction. Discovery showed up, and okay, maybe we have another opportunity to do something else here. We'll see. And uh, then who knows what the Picard show is going to do with yeah. our lives. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting couple of years. Especially now that they're like, oh, we're going to do a couple of cartoons and yeah, <laughs> new announcements of uh, more than one, no, another an as perhaps, as perhaps animated shorts and yeah. some. Uh, some hints about about the Picard show and dealing with the uh, the Hobus uh, uh, um, tragedy. So yeah. yeah, there you go. Um, okay, so I do have a question. Um, I sent you an email about this earlier. I hope you don't mind me asking you on stream. Um, but since people have been asking, uh, Discovery and Dorian's playable. What do we think the timeline is on more playable Discovery races coming to the game? Um, big. Big deal for me, Andorians. Um, bigger deal personally, Saurians. If you just don't know mm -hmm. that that I always play a Saurian. <laughs> um, Saurian being, uh, you know, the yeah. the the, the uh, order for geckos uh, <laughs> is, uh, is, is Sauria. Um, so um, so now that we see Saurians there, and uh, and of course, uh, and then Tellarites. You got to have the humans. Especially Vulcans. now that we've seen that awesome Tellarite. In yeah, the and we just had short. the. Yes, so now and we, of course Discovery Klingons as well. Of course, Discovery Klingons. I think you will see Discovery Klingons first. Um, okay. This is nothing, none of this is confirming a schedule. We're there is no confirming schedule. Um, you're not going to see any of this for 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 Mirror of Discovery, um, but uh, I I think there's a 
fair possibility you might see something in the in the next release, but I don't. I mean, it's an art schedule thing. It's not really a design thing. Um, but uh, you know, we already have a parcel sculpt for Andorians because we've seen the uh, Jeffrey Combs character already. The uh, um, Shran, or I guess it's it's, yeah. it's uh, son of Shran, um, <laughs> and um, but there's no female sculpt, yeah. right? And that's actually a completely. I mean, it's it's not free to make that. So yeah. plus the body that has to happen when you're on the beach. So yep. um, so there's still quite a bit of work that has to be done by the artist. Making a new species, playable species is actually quite a lot of work for them. But um, I, I can guarantee you that they are they are on some schedule. Klingons Discovery Klingons is a is a uh, is a high priority there, as well as all you know Discovery Klingon uniforms, which is uh, a lot more work, but actually in a lot of ways easier. It's just faces and make, making sure that faces are you know you can make yeah. them look different, have different hair types and head types and stuff. That's a lot of work. But we've got, uh, but you make one uniform, you make one uniform. So we've got, and remember, there's 24 Klingon houses, and we're, I don't know when we're going to get 24 Klingon house uniforms, but, yeah. you know, we've already, you know, we've, or, we've already shown the House Mokai uniforms, right? And we'll, we will be seeing um, House Takuma and House Cole uniforms coming up soon. So we have another set of Klingon uniforms coming up, and, and then they'll all start eventually becoming available for Klingon players. Cool. So. Uh, all right, so this question was asked uh, in sort of a hostile way. Uh, or the, Yay, or the love but So I'm going to rephrase, because <laughs> uh, I think it's an interesting question. Um, what is it... Um, no, that's better. That's the wrong way to ask it. Uh, why is it, is it so important to Star Trek Online? Um, why, why, what is it about um, our game that makes it so important that we have the cast members from the show is coming in and doing these, these guest star and cameo roles. Why, why do we focus so much on that? Why do we focus on getting uh, Star Trek actors in our show? Um, why, why wouldn't that be important? It's like, I don't, I, I actually, I, I, and, and, and I don't mean this in any insulting or negative way, but I mean, um, one of the things that, we love about Star Trek. I mean, if the, the people who come to, to Star Trek online, a large number of them are Star Trek fans. Yeah, they're just they're just huge Star Trek fans. That they, is, I would I would venture to say right? where most of our audience <laughs> comes from. Yeah, so um, if you if you know until Discovery, the only place to get more Star Trek stories was on Star Trek Online. And so for many for what eight years or so, yeah. that was the only place to get those stories. And um, so there is a lot of things that we get to leverage as an IP holder. Such as the ships and the arts, and, the, and uh, surprisingly, not the music, because the yeah. composers own that. And so, like, I've always wanted to get more star, original Star Trek uh, ori uh, uh, original. At least we have. Da, 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 yeah, we were able to get that. That was a lot of work to get the Doomsday theme and the fight music oh, to man. get that. Um, but uh, um, so, the other part that's huge about Star Trek is the characters. Yeah. The, 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 the people love many of the Star Trek characters. There's always talking about who's your favorite captain who's your favorite what's your favorite what's your idea yeah. your, your your fantasy bridge crew right who's your favorite yeah. tactical officer right i mean we're all I, going to a talk by william shatner on friday just yeah because it's william yeah. shatner why, why do we go to star trek conventions yeah. right i mean yeah there's props there's and swag you can buy but we go there to see the actors because we grew up with them we grew up with these characters and we love them and 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 they had an impression on us so um why wouldn't we want to see them? And, and, and I think that the res general response and both to like subjectively safe forums and posts and numerically, I think one of the biggest bumps we ever got was the first time we put Denise Crosby on, this, on, on uh, yeah. and put her in an episode. The turnout we had to show up for that episode told us everything we need to know. Yeah. This is how this is what we need to do. Yeah. And and we made a huge investment to say, yeah, this this is a good idea. This worked. And um, and we want to keep getting them. Yeah. Right? We also do notice that if you keep getting someone reoccurring too much, they, they have less of a draw. But that's OK. We want to tell a story. But right. that spike. Uh, yeah, so the, so we don't want to just have people just this is it and then and then we're done with them. We'll we'll keep bringing them. But getting that new person in brings has a has a big draw oh, because I've never seen that person before. That's my favorite so and so. I love Tilly. I love Worf. I love whoever yeah. it is. Right. Um, and the other big thing is that these characters already have backstories to them. If I'm going to make up my own person, my own character. Um, and, and I have to explain them and give them a long backstory if, if I want to do something dramatic with them, whether they have a dramatic loss or they die or if they, or if they uh, have a great victory or have a nemesis. 
that's a lot of story to have to tell. If I'm going to bring in Jordy, he's got seven years of backstory yeah. already on him. So that's a huge win for us. And so when we get to tell stories in Star Trek Online, we try to make those stories personal about their characters and their adventures and what they've already done. Um, you know, uh, Tuvok, for instance, you know, he had a traumatic experience with the uh, with H-472. And so we put him right in the forefront. You know, yeah. he was, you know, he, he, he was telepathically messed up by them. Um, the story of Captain Kim and, and, and his personal story about him being duplicated. And the Kim who's we at the end of Voyager is not the same Kim who we started with, but we find out that other original Kim is still there. And what are those, what are those effects? These are personal stories that we could, would be so hard for us to make people care about. Yeah. And bottom line is too, I mean, maybe it's not the bottom line, but a big point of that is, um, you know, it gets a lot of pickup. Yeah. Media pickup, yeah. right? I mean, when 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 LeVar Burton joined us, lots of outlets picked it up. Yeah. This right? morning, a bunch of people picked it up because we're the only people to have the real Captain Gilly. Right. So that's that's sorry, a, that's... timelines. I mean, you, <laughs> you have you have you're in your game too. It's just we have Mary Wiseman playing her. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not a competition. Um, and it's so there's just I mean the reasons just go on and on. And I think and and bottom line, this is the real bottom line. It just makes a better story. Yeah. It just it just does. I think this is what people think that people love to see these stories and these characters and and what these side quills I call them instead of prequels or sequels. What hap what else has happened with them? You know, you know we uh, what what's uh, what happened to who was Mary what you know Tilly beforehand? What yeah. what's let's find out more about Killy because we didn't really see her and I think there's an important story. There's a fun story to tell there. Yeah. Um, so, well, and that's so great too. That because you know everything we do with Discovery, um, we had to get approved by the writers' room for the actual show, and yeah. so it's really cool of them to just be like, "Oh yeah, this character was incredibly popular and interesting. You yeah. guys play with her. You know, yeah, we're not that's, gonna do anything that's great. With her. Yeah, <laughs> both for Killy and for Jaula, that yeah. was great. Um, one of my things I'm most proud of for our writer Paul is that he wrote this whole script for the, for, for for Tilly for Age of Discovery, the, the first release, and we sent the script to Kirsten Beyer. Um, who's you know the writer on on Discovery, and she had one correction. That was it. She was like, "Oh, just change uh. this one thing because she it was is, is uh, I think because we had meant we were going to say something about about uh, about her wanted career path, and yeah. they and they wanted to keep that as like more of in the show where she's like, "I'm going to be captain one day. I'm not going to tell anybody." And okay. they want and I think we had mentioned something about in the script about her wanting to be a captain wanting to be a captain and she said no let's keep that secret okay and it was like you know great, great. job Paul right Paul, well, that's Paul's like, awesome with right? it. Like, the dude's is such a friggin encyclopedia of yeah. Star Trek it's yeah. amazing oh there's a really great line I, I wonder if I get on here that he pulled up that, that Killy right today so alive. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to I'll see if I can find it to send it but it was just it was just a really great insult that 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 Killy says to, to some Klingons and it was nice. like where did you get that that was a beautiful uh, Klingon something um uh, I, I can't remember what it was. Something about cockroaches. So there's really an interesting follow-up question from Twitch to our, our uh, Star Trek actor discussion. Um, so we have some really interesting characters um, uh, we've created uh, for STO, like Kumarke is my favorite example because I love her so much. Yeah. Um, how do we balance, you know, like bringing in, you know, the Discovery actors to do their bit and then also continuing the storylines we've been building with uh, those characters that we've created? Uh, um, I, I would hope that we... Um, we can't possibly build a storyline just with Star Trek characters, right? Right. There's just um, even if we could afford it, I think it would be way too derivative. Yeah. Right. If we just did every everything was just a reunion of cast members, um, we actually are, are introducing a new character um, in in uh, Mirror, Mirror, Mirror Discovery um, that's come that's coming out that we will. May, may or may not, I don't know if players will pick up on who that character is. I think they will figure out who it is, yeah. who's actually going to return in, in, the, uh, in the spring with our other uh, uh, character, with our other yeah. uh, Discovery lead who will be coming on board. Um, and, and, it'll be, and so we're... Which is, we've already mentioned to we've already several mentioned times. Two, right, so we know that Rekha Sharma will be returning in yeah. this, uh, around the springtime as, as Landry, um, a version of Landry. Uh, I, I won't say too much about which. And so we're going to be introducing a... Um, a character in a couple of weeks that will have that we will see again in the Landry storyline. Oh, that's interesting. And so, um, and, I think, offline, important, and I, I think it's an important. How that works? And I think and I think it's important. It's important. And so, how do we balance it? Well, I mean, it's you know we we write we we plan our stories and 
and we have contingencies for our stories and we said that this story you know if we can't get this car actor then we'll use this actor and instead we'll change the story to be more personal about that one in some way but there's always a supporting cast and um and it's uh it's not always easy to make up a character that becomes um so uh likable on yeah. our own, right? Um, and, and not be like Kumarki is a great example who started off as a supporting character and became more of a recurring theme character and that was uh, uh, voiced by Kipley Brown if, uh, if she was on, uh, who actually I met through a gentleman named James Carwin. Hi James, you may be watching, um, who, uh, who is one of the directors of Star Trek Continues. Um, and so, um, and also he, he, I first met him when he was uh, uh, just reduced his uh, noir movie called Yesterday Was a Lie and Kipley, Kipley and Chase Masterson star starred in that. So there's a lot of Star Trek, you know, uh, tie-ins there and so... Uh, it's uh, and a, star it's Trek a very family. big yet very small, small family. family. Yeah, exactly. Um, so she plays that character and she plays it well and she, I think I, I, I adore that character. I think we've seen a lot of her. I don't know if we're going to see her anytime soon. She, you know, her story kind of wraps up really nicely in the... In the I mean, she was always meant to be... Her character was always meant to be the mirror of what players are because she's a brand new to the universe right. and she's see and so we introduced that when we're kind of like the end of the iconian war now let's get back to exploring and going and she's seeing the universe through the eyes of a child like wonder it's like this is so beautiful she sees the space whales she sees all these different things it's supposed to reflect the, the player's emotion um and so um so we see her grow up quickly from this naive naive person to be this powerful, strong, yeah. um, you know, captain, so and that's and that's why it's so hard to make original characters because she was with us for like almost two years yeah. to tell that to tell her personal story, um, as opposed, to, you know, so if we could have just dropped her on the first episode, no one would have remembered her, yeah. right? Um, so we we introduce a lot of characters, but if we want to really invest in one, it's a long investment, so it's hard. For sure. Um, so um, we do always see them, and, and whether or not they stick around as long as Kumarki did, uh, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, you're certainly going to continue to see, um, 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 oh, excuse me, um, Michelle Speck's character, um, the, 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 from, from uh, the, 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 yeah, the Vorta. Uh, um, uh, begins the now. Yeah, it starts with an L. Uh, Someone help God, me out. Someone's gonna. Someone some people are out. gonna throw this in chat. <laughs> in their faces. Um, the game designers can't even remember their own characters' names. Anybody, God. Anybody oh, there's a stream delay, so uh, okay. Loris. There Loris. We go. Yeah. So I mean, we'll she, we'll we'll probably see her again. She's gonna continue to be the contact for the for, for Jim Hadar characters, but we, we 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 may see her again. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. Um, cool. 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 Uh, let's see. Uh, Susan Mary, I see you, and thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Hi, Susie. Um, what? I said hi, Susie. I see her, too. Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> apparently, at the end of the universe, we'll just be slamming, what, trying to make turn off the sun so it's not bright in here anymore. <laughs> uh, so, let's see. Was there, a, was there a question you guys had in here as opposed to most all the all hilarious comments? Good old slamic, huh? Oh, People God. still remembering your old slamic. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's hard to forget that episode. Yeah. <laughs> Coliseum, man. Coliseum. Uh, apparently, people want Sean Cena. Uh, I agree. <laughs> oh, um, uh, there was a request for Lut uh, Lieutenant Landry to meet Lieutenant Tardigrade, uh, and <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't. Uh, I, we're not going to be throwing Tardigrades around, around uh, no. as far as like characters it, it, in the show. I, right? I, I, mean, I mean, I, I won the lovely fight to get the the adoption agency, which yeah, I love. That I you mean, guys are enjoying as much as you are. Little, little that that yeah. kind of stuff, yeah. But you know, it's it's a uh, yeah. yeah, they're they're. Uh, I don't think you're going to see them coming around as a as, as a major plot point within our uh, outside of what you know, like you saw in the Glen, just yeah. like as as the prequel to kind of how that happened. I do. I, I um, uh, if I was to bring back any character to, to, to continue with, it would probably be Obasek, though. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, he's he's, super interesting. I think he's something that has a good history, and um, he's I a think. very Shakespearean character. Yes, and very yeah. and his, and the actor just has a great voice for him. So I just yeah. uh, that that's a great that they, there's. It's it's so much uh, more powerful to to have a character to um, yeah. that that resonates and uh, has a history and so it will be interesting. So you know maybe we'll bring back Obasek in some story arc. Yeah. Um, so somebody uh, True Nefor asked uh, if budget is not a concern, 
Uh, what actor would you want to get? Picard. Most? Yeah. Picard. That's the, that's just, the easiest, yeah. simplest answer to that question. I'm right there with you. Yeah. Jared's just, been pushing for a, a TNG expansion for like two two straight years now. <laughs> well, I mean, with the Picard show coming up, I mean, never I, I, you never know. There may, it's, there, there's, there in our there's story, there's now. story opportunities now, and 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 it's they'll be different and much more. I'm sure much more mature and more modern stories, um, and. Um, you know, not only do I, the question is, who's your favorite captain? By far, it was always, for me, it was always Picard. Yeah. Even though I grew I grew up on Kirk, but Picard right. was always my favorite, the intellectual, uh, you, know, you know. Kirk Kirk's like your favorite uncle. Picard's like your dad. Like, that's the way I, the way I look at it. And I mean, I grew up with Picard. What did someone but... say, like, I, I can't remember, I think, like, you want you want Kirk in wartime, but Picard in peacetime or something yeah. like that. Although but, Picard in war is kind of a badass, too. He is yeah. a real badass. He you is. don't underestimate Picard. Yeah. Um, he's brilliant. Um, and, um, but I also just really, really like, um, I just, I just, I, I just really like Patrick Stewart too as a yeah. person. Yeah. He's just, uh, you know, I love that he dedicates so much of his Could life. Could you hit the light there behind the green screen? Sorry. Do Stupid. I have to do a dance? Or? No, just hit them. Yeah. There's the switch. I don't know why they're on a timer. I didn't have to hit it. I just had to show my face. <laughs> but I mean, one of the things, like you know, he's he he's he's politically active. He's a he's an outspoken feminist. He he does charity work for his. Uh, pardon me. He does charity work for. Um, PTSD soldiers and for beaten and for beaten women because yeah. that's that household he grew up with and he does a charity work for his he says for PTSD soldiers for his father who used to be his mother and he does charity work for 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 battered women for his for his mother and so yeah. he honors them both um, and it's a big part of his life he's a you know he's a true gentleman and so um, uh, I would be honored to work with him uh, I, I I I don't even I'm scared to. In some ways, to can I can I do it justice? Yeah. Can can we? Can we Which do is that I imagine, what I imagine that writers room is going through right now. Yeah. I mean, even people like Michael Chapon, who are I don't know if that's how you pronounce his last name, but who are like, you know, Pulitzer-winning writers are probably still yeah. like, oh God, it's Picard. Like, how do yeah. we do this right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, it's there. There there are a few that would that really. I think probably the only one that would really you know. Give me anxiety of like, and we, yeah. can we do this right? I mean, there's always just the intention of like, make sure let's get this right, but that would be so important. Yeah. And so I would not jump the gun on just some sort of like, oh, let's just jump on, let's just make a quick card story. It has to be perfect. Yeah. So. I, I'm really fascinated to see. So I, I don't know if you saw the articles that came out today. They confirmed that um, a big chunk of the story is coming out of the destruction of Romulus, of the Picard show. Right, the Hope of um, Star Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and so I'm, I'm really curious to see what they're doing because they're, you know, maybe 10 years before us in the timeline. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, so there's a potential of, obviously, as people have uh, worried about, there's a potential of them just erasing us from canon in one fell stroke. But there's, I think there's a lot more potential of them adding a lot of interesting background wrinkles and history to our world. It, they're... they're... I, I'm, I'm aware of some of the things they are doing with this story. CBS yeah. came out and talked with us about what. Uh, I'm not sure if I should look at this or if I should look at this. Uh, so, it's this. I, I know. I know that's what it's getting, but I want to make sure that it, it yeah. looks more personal. But, but they came out and they told us some of the things that we're doing, and, and we shared some of the things that we had done. So, um, I, with no 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 hope that they would change their story just for yeah. you know just for us, but maybe something inspired them. Um, you know what? What does that mean for Star Trek Online? Yeah. If if Picard's story invalidates some of our fiction, which is entirely possible, and we've done everything we can for nine years to make our story perfectly canon, is you know, and and, to va and va validate all all canon of Star Trek. Um, there is really there. There are three possibilities. One, they write their story to fit ours perfectly. It's not going to happen. It's just it's very very unlikely that they're going to yeah. say this is. You know, we have to. We don't want to. That that's just unlikely. If a writer um, has a good a, a good right, idea and right. it contradicts something we've done, yeah. they will contradict it. They, there, there's a there's a possibility that everything they write is just happens to not even uh, be completely parallel to us and not intersect with us whatsoever. Yeah. So it's like there's oh no problem. Yeah. It's just in this little pocket thing and not, and it didn't had nothing to do with us. So that would be great. Um, the the other po the the other thing is that we um, the, the the third option would be that uh, we retcon. 
Yeah. We could just we could retcon and and depending on how much how different their story is, we can maybe retcon some things, and that's I'm perfectly fine with retconning. I don't have a problem with that. Um, and then the fourth thing is we can say, well, no, it's multiverse. Yep, we're in a different universe. In a different universe, and we'll go visit that universe. Yeah, you know, and pop the, over, pop over there, like. see what's going on. Yeah. So there, there's, I, I really, I don't, I'm not panicked about it. I'm not worried about it at all. I'm just excited to have new, not only new Star Trek, but new Picard Star Trek. And that just means more opportunity, more story opportunities for us. Probably more ships and techs and tech and gear and whoever knows what else that they're going to put in the show. says, oh, we can use that. Let's do that. We're going to do, a, you know, we'll do a Picard reputation or whatever. I have no idea what that means. But, you know, that's just more stuff for us to, le us to leverage and more toys for everyone to play with. So yeah. it's just a good thing. Yeah. Um, uh, look directly at the camera and say hi, Deanna, because she just showed up on Facebook. Hi, too. Deanna. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, let's see. Um, uh, <laughs> if they keep STO in official canon, y'all will have to update the skins on your launch era ships. No, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see it's so can... much easier to just delete them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. There have been so many times where we're like, how do we fix this? And either Al or Andre is like, couldn't we just remove it? And I'm like, please, no, no. I don't want to deal with that. It's the easiest way. Uh, That's yeah. why we pay you. <laughs> That's not why you pay me. You pay me to kick the door into your office and say, don't do that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Wraith Shadow, um, Al's not responsible for your LTS Borg skins that you're talking about on every chat. Don't at me. <laughs> what, what? Oh, uh, yeah. So the yeah. Lifetime subscription Borg uh, don't have a full oh. body Borg skin. And they oh. come into chat every week oh, and ask they, me oh, about it. Yes, she's got this kind of like, yeah, it's like it a, ends right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, yeah. Um, Yes, Al is not responsible. Next time you have a character artist on here, you can yell at them. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, well, I'm trying to see if there's any more uh, specifically mirror discovery questions. would be great. Although we did get into Picard for a little bit there. Um, but, uh, oh, um, okay. I think this is... Uh, Nebshake90 wants to know how you would handle the end of the Enterprise E in our timeline. So I think it's the idea of the transition from the E to the F. Um, we will <sighs> never handle the end of the Enterprise E. In Star Trek Online, okay, it was specifically requested not to by CBS. So there you go. So that it's just just don't talk about what happened to the Enterprise. -y. So someday they might do it. They, I don't. Yeah, they might. Yeah. I don't know why that was before we before we introduced the F. We talked about them about that, and they didn't want to. They they said stay away from that. Okay. So um, there you go. So I uh, all all I know is what what is uh, what is publicly known is that in in uh, in the in the Countdown comics that. Um, that Data is captain of the Enterprise E, and he's wearing a Star Trek Online uniform. Yeah, oh, yeah. In, so there you go. In the, yeah. So that that's is, awesome. yeah. That's that's that is that is as much canon as well as any so far. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Um, uh, Sergeant Zandor um, asked Zandor. if we're going to get yep if we're going to get playable Terran uniforms. Uh, Discovery Terran uniforms, I think, is a specific question. Uh, that was the number two most requested thing from Discovery Season One when we ran that little informal poll. Uh, and we've just talked about um, putting in a Mirror Universe themed box. So yeah, my I, question to you is, what do you think? <laughs> Al's <the> subtle <laughs> nods are not very subtle. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, and this thing, this thing, this little. This thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoosh, whoosh. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, can we get more 2410 mirror ships? Um, probably, like I said earlier in the stream, uh, 20, right now, 24, 2410, 2410 mirror, ships. mirror ships. What we're doing right now is Discovery ships, because we're yeah. working with Discovery. We've got a ton of Discovery ships in the pipeline, because we made a billion for, for Starbase 1 and Battle of the Binary Stars. Uh, and so I expect that to be the focus for a little while. But like I said, uh, the ship... Uh, that we're getting for the next lockbox is a bit of a fun surprise, and we'll have more information about that later. Yeah. Well, I mean, yes, and so there, there's a ton of there's a ton of Klingon ships. We now officially, although you have not seen them all, have every single Discovery season one Federation ship made. Yep. Uh, one of them, you ha at least one, has not been released live. Um, at least just we have the costume for it, not yeah. as a playable ship, and um, and hope to make. All of them in some way available to be playable, as well as all of those Klingon ships. We don't have all the Klingon ships, although we have 
the ones that we have all the cool ones and then some that aren't so cool but um that just are i'm sorry they, <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if we will actually make those available as playable ships there because was, some, there's some there's some questionable uh, uh design aesthetics on some of the um there was but there's something really cool. There though. was a thread on Reddit today um, with some of the uh, Wolf 359 ships that I had mm -hmm. never seen before. And one of them was the uh, the Freedom, the single nacelle with the saucer. I'm not a big fan of the, uh, that, the single that nacelle. Thing. My God. I mean, it's the, the, it's the Kelvin, too. It's the single Kelvin's nacelle. Kelvin's single nacelle, but at least like on top uh, it looks it had, a little better. The original TOS Kelvin style only just had the one nacelle. Yeah. And then... And then uh, um, Yes, JJ JJ Verse added a little hole at the top, so it's yeah. somewhat symmetric, balanced at least, maybe yeah. not symmetrical. Yeah. Um, I've never been a fan of the single cell uh, engine ships. They just it just looks like a like a, a it's, tool, like a vacuum or a pizza cutter or something. It's, just, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's it's uh, although the rule has been broken many times. Obviously, the original Roddenberry bull is that nacelle always come nacelles always come in pairs yeah. until the. This, until the discovery, until the Enterprise Dreadnought came out with three, yeah. and then someone says, "Oh, there's actually two nacelles in that one nacelle," and it's like, well, "That's a load of crap." Yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, but but one nacelle just looks goofy, and um, I don't think we'll do that one. But there are there there actually is a Wolf three five nine ship I think that we've actually created but never released. Um, really? Yeah. There's one sitting around with finding the right time for it. Yep. Sometimes when. Thomas has extra time. He, he just makes ships. He just makes a ship because... And now that we have Tobias, sometimes Tobias just yeah. makes ships. and we just make ships. So it's always good to have a catalog, a backlog of those, and then it says, hey, we need to release a ship. We don't have time. We've got this one in the pocket, so let's just release that one. So so there is a there is a Wolf 359 ship somewhere, and I'm not going to say what it is, but there are there's a handful in there that's... Um, they're not like super popular, amazing ships. Uh, and, and, and I want to release them all, but at the same time, we have to remember that it takes just as much time to arch and design a ship that's not popular as it is yeah. to make one that is popular and and there's a, there are business needs and and you sell something it's you if it's a dud it hurts our bottom line yeah so um it, uh, we have to be very strategic about it yeah well, i really want the you know whatever the niagara or the new orleans or the or the curry class or the or whatever it's like yeah yeah you you do, <laughs> but <laughs> just you. That's that's one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so. you know, the thing the thing with uh, like you know ships that we know are going to get a lot of requests or have been getting a lot of requests, like the um, Vorcha when we finally did that a couple uh, list this year. Uh, whereas, like you know, somebody in chat is saying the the T six Oberth, and I've seen a lot of requests for an Oberth. From I think that same person. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just the one guy. Yeah, Oberth isn't even now that bad. Like I'm thinking the the, the Curry slash Shelley class is mm. just a Frankenstein uh, uh, Excelsior. Yeah. And they do you know, honestly call it the Shelley because it was Frankenstein. Yeah. Um, and uh, well, and then there's the Springfield and Ni Springfield Niagara, uh, and then New Orleans and these are some of the Wolf 399 ships. And then there's of course we kind of have the. Um, the the uh, steam not, not the steam runner but not the steam runner the um, it's the opposite of the Oslo we called it the Oslo Norway oh yeah that we have an Oslo class but we never made the original Norway class which isn't too bad I think it's actually pretty decent looking what we usually like to do with those Thomas likes to do is take those ships and even do them with discovery ships is okay here's here's the original but we're making a T6 version, so we've modernized it. Yep, so we made so, a 24 so, or 10 so Thomas version. makes it really cool. So if you really like the old one, that's been like the strategy. You can change your skin to the original one, but we made a really cooler looking one yeah. that's uh, more modernized. And then, and that's that's basically what we'll do when we kind of release those. Yeah. Um, so Q Cullen had an interesting question um, uh, that I don't know how much you're allowed to talk to or talk about because you've yelled at me for talking about it on Twitter before. But um, how would you feel about getting the USS Emmett Till in the game? Um, I would love to have the Emmett Till. Um, I don't know enough about it, yeah. about what's going on. So I need to know what they're doing with it in the story or whatever. I don't even, what, are they having like a mini episode? Yeah, they're creating, I guess, with, a with first Dax? animated first episode of a hypothetical DS9 season 8 to yeah. go on the DVD with the documentary. Right. And so, I mean, uh, I love that they chose the name Emmett Till. Um, that really, I think... It, it did exactly what I think it intended to do. It was included, I had a lot of people, including myself, look up the name and learn yeah. that story, and that was really good. Um, I think the ship is cool looking, um, and uh, we we can we we have the C, we have CBS approval to do a ship to do an Emmett Hill, but I I don't know I need to know more about it before yeah. even considering it any further. 
Yeah. So, I mean, if, but if it splits into two ships, I mean, I don't know, right? <laughs> That's true. So I got to wait to see what's That's one going. of those things that always, like, you know, we were talking about this the other day because there's some stuff we know that we can't talk about um, uh, that it would be great to, like, act on right now but like all we have are pictures so we don't yeah. know what the thing does or yeah like that i mean that was that was the problem with discovery itself that we actually you know we knew we 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 everyone knew what the discovery looked like we, yeah and, and and we had and we knew when we wanted to get the original discovery out into star trek online but we didn't know what it did so it's like, does it do anything yeah it's, it's weird what's this what's this pizza cutter ring on yeah. it? it looks like does that do something i actually thought maybe it kind of was a saucer separation thing and mm-hmm. just a little thing shot out or something and, and yeah, it was yeah. just separated um or maybe it like turtled up like or something oh, yeah. so i had no idea what it did and we were working on it to, to uh and so we john cbs john van sitter cbs what, what is you gotta tell us what it does because it's, it's bottom line and he sent us the models, and then in the model, we could see that the ring actually Spot. moved. We still didn't know exactly what it did. Well, at least and we the, know it spins. And then it was the next week that it came out on the on the episode. Uh, we saw what it did that it yeah. did that, that it sport jumped, and so then we we went with that. So, yeah. so, so, so we get to know a lot of things from CBS, but only just what we need to know. Yeah. Right. So he, he definitely he the CBS tells us you know it's we don't get here's everything, but okay, you need this, you need this. Well, it gives us that information. So yeah, that. Um, uh, so yeah, we need, we needed to know that before that happened. So uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to invest in the Emmett Till until we know if it you know if it does something if there's something special about it. And even if it doesn't do anything special, anything we any traits or consoles we do for it, we want it at least to be thematically appropriate. Yeah. Um, so uh, that, that, that at least harkens back to the story. Yeah. Um, RTK142 asks, how fair of game are the short treks? Like how fair game are they for, for us to use for, for us? Stuff? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's canon. We we're 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 a CBS license. Anything CBS does for Star Trek, we have full license to. Uh, anything CBS or or, or 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 Paramount, the only thing that we uh, on screen that we are questionable access to is the animated series, and that's on a case by case basis because yeah. there's a lot of weird licenses stuff, t- yeah. uh, tied up into there yeah. but anything anything on screen movie or tv we have we have 100 percent access to anything soft canon we have partial access to um just a on per basis thing and, and yeah. same thing for TV. yeah if lower decks it turns out to not be fully canon but does something cool we still would have access to that too it just you know it's a question of how to work that in so yeah. that's a comedy cartoon but even if it was like like if Lower Decks became like a Rick and Morty of Star Trek, yeah. right? Well, um, which you know it, it could be handled poorly or be- or brilliantly. I, yeah. I don't know. Um, but even if it, you know whatever it was, um, uh, it doesn't mean that we couldn't tell a story in our style yeah. using those characters or locations or stories, right? right. You know, it's, if if they introduce some new, you know, energy monster, we'll just have the energy monster. Yeah. And maybe we'll bring the character in from there, and they'll have to deal with the energy monster. But um, as, a, as a, a, but uh, we don't have to tell it in a comedy way. We probably maybe be a, maybe maybe we tell be a little humor. Humor yeah. is hard, but we don't have well, to copy don't... that style. It's not yeah. like we're going to have an animated character in <laughs> yeah. our show. Although that would be hilarious if the characters from that show were just, just drawn animated, completely kind different. Of like, like, kind of like Spider-Verse. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. just came in in their own style. Yeah. Um, but we could, uh, we would leverage it if it made sense for us. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, can we bring back the USS Discovery if the story arc is a thousand years after it went missing? So that that, that question is specifically we, about the episode um, the, the, the with... Um, What's his name from Leverage, where the ship had yeah, been missed yeah. out? What's, what exactly the question? Can we bring can it we, back? Can we bring it back? Can we bring it back? Can we bring the ship itself back? Since it's, Can we have the discovery in 2409? Yeah, the sentient discovery that was... Yeah, I don't, I don't think that we're anywhere near doing something like that until we know what happened, yeah. right? I mean, there's... I could think of a million. I mean, I don't. I I knew that they were going to do that, but I had no idea how it yeah. got there or what's what's its future. And we still really happen? don't. Like we know the end point, but not any of the middle. Yeah, we don't know that. We, we just we know some. You know, I I knew that that story was going to come out. That there was going to be a story about it a thousand years in the future. And I'm like, okay, how the hell is that going to happen? Why did yeah. that happen? How did they get there? And how did how did they get a nest a nest thermostat on on Discovery? So uh, it, it's. Uh, until until that until you see that story played out on Discovery, where we will not be touching it, unless the writer, writer's room says, "Oh, we don't have any plans for that. Go ahead and take it," which, uh, which yes. seems seems right. unlikely. But seems you know. unlikely. So, um, uh, 
there, there certainly will be a point that the, 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 enough of it will be released and says, hey, can we, you know, yeah. can we do this now? Um, but we're not going to jump the gun and start telling a story about how that got there or what happened to the people or what's what's going on. That that's you know that's like lose your license kind of yeah. like like taboo. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, so, uh, important question. We get their scraps. Uh, when are we adding the Tier 6 Fortress Tiberius from the uh, Transformers uh, crossover? <laughs> well, we uh, saw Transform Transformers were in Star Trek comics, so that makes yep. it canon. Yeah, it's totally canon. It's totally canon. So, totally Green, canon. La Lantern, so it's Green Lantern, Doctor Who, Planet of the Apes, and X-Men. Yep. yep. Um, just got so. to ask JVC who has the rights to Tiberius. Is it Boom or is it us? Because uh, I'm telling you, man, <laughs> you want you want a ship that's going to make some money. <laughs> it's, it's a, the, the transforming Tiberius class would, yeah. make, would make some bank. Yeah, it would. Um, <laughs> that would be our last season. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, we've, we've been looking for something to do for April Fool's. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe next year. <laughs> Because uh, we have a good April Fool's idea for this year. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. We got it. We got yeah. some fooly stuff. Yeah, we got some good ideas. I don't know if that's actually in the schedule. It should be. Uh, let's see. Um, T6 Tardis when uh, tomorrow it comes out with the with uh, tomorrow's update. The T6 Tardis. Uh, you won't be able to see it because uh, just the doctor's flying it around and he's got <laughs> the chameleon circuit working again. But it's there. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody should be watching the new. Uh, could you? A couple people on Facebook chat are asking for you to define what soft cannon means. Um, so that's a, actually a, a, not a simple question answer, but basically canon is just, 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 yes, it's, it's fair to be not throwing around our own techno babble. Yeah. So canon is anything that has been on screen. That is like official canon. If you saw it on, on, in the movies or in the television show, it's considered canon. And when writers, uh, and directors make new Star Trek, whether it's a new movie or a new television show, generally... The, they are expected to follow and not invalidate anything that happened uh, in previous canons, so uh, in, in previous pre previous iterations of uh, of, the, of the Star Trek, um, it is soft canon is anything that is not that. The one weird exception is is the um, is the animated series because at one point, um, uh, I believe I don't remember the order, but. Roddenberry said it wasn't canon, and CBS said it was canon, and then later they went back and forth on it. Uh, it's kind of a ridiculous show. Many of the episodes yeah. are ridiculous, and so um, part of it could be canon. Um, and then things like books and comics and games are generally considered soft canon. That means that it's like sort of real. It's, 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 there's something acknowledged about it. But um, the simple fact is if we make a game just like what's happening with the Picard show or if anyone wrote a book or a comic book, um, the writers and directors of Paramount and CBS are not beholden to make sure that their story that they write is doesn't invalidate those what comics. Yeah, what we're doing, what comics do, uh, uh, what uh, what other books do. There's so many books and novels um, because it'd be impossible to handle that because the books themselves contradict themselves. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. There's there's things that happen in one book that make no sense in another. I remember what one. happened to uh, Kira. Um, and on memory beta before I, you know, started working for us, yeah. and there was it was like, well, in this book series she commands Deep Space Nine, in this book series she's dead, and in this book yeah. I was like, oh, right. oh, okay. <laughs> so that's that's a soft canon is yeah. something that's and so so John Van Sitters who is in char who is our main contact at CBS, uh, hello John, really cool guy, a very cool guy, and and um, uh, second only to me in Star Trek knowledge. No, he's <laughs> <laughs> he certainly ah. rivals. It'd be oh. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's a gauntlet oh, challenge down. that we yeah. have to do in STLV yeah. next year. Yeah. I will put it on the stream. It'd be a very interesting JVC trivia versus contest. Al Rivera on uh, Star Trek. Yeah, trivia. Submit your questions now, kids. Um, uh, but certainly a huge, a huge uh, library of Star Trek knowledge. I mean, that's his job. He's in charge. He's in charge of all third-party licensing of Star Trek, um, which includes us and books and pizza cutters and 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 everything. And he works also works directly with. The writers of Discovery and the, and with Paramount and uh, uh, he gets us the assets we need. He gets us the models and takes us uh, um, brings us down and sees things that were you know, like back the behind the scenes stuff. Um, so uh, or they going that? Oh, so, so John Van Sitters, um, he he write he 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 asked like for instance the question is is this book considered canon? Is Star Trek Online considered canon? And he always answers like it's canon if you want it to be. It is up to you, the individual audience, consumer, viewer, reader, player, whether or not you think it is canon. Um, and 
if for some reason your favorite game, comic, or book is somehow not consistent with what is true canon, which is on-screen stuff, then it's in the multiverse. Then it just happens in an alternate reality yep. because there is infinite realities in Star Trek, and that has been uh, that has been established. That's canon. And that is canon. <laughs> that there is a mul- there is that is uh, uh, um, parallels. Yeah. The Worf episode with Worf and the parallels episode we saw yep. in the multiverse. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so that is one way that we can say that yeah, it, everything can is canon or can be canon. And we've done everything we can for Star Trek Online to be 100% in line with everything that is canon to make sure that we don't invalidate anything um, until they make all these new shows that may start invalidating us. There were points in Discovery I'm watching, I'm like, especially when, the, the, when they started showing the, the, the Defiant, the oh, TOS yeah. Defiant, and they said, I knew that was, coming on, that was coming on the show, that the Defiant would be a thing because it you know, popped over to the Mirror Universe, and that's how the Terrans got so powerful, according to Mirror Darkly in, uh, in Enterprise. And it says, please don't invalidate our, our, our Defiant story. Please don't invalidate our Defiant story. Because yeah. we have a Defiant story about how that got there. We talk about how the, how, how the uh, Nakul and the Tholians were involved in sending in Defiant, Defiant oh. back over to the Mirror Universe in the past. And luckily they didn't. I was like, yep. oh, okay. Oh, they got it. <laughs> they, they didn't invalidate it. So um, that was good. Um, yeah. I had no idea if they were going to maybe tell a different story about how the fight ended up in the Mary universe, and yeah. they didn't, so they didn't validate us, but they could have. Yep. Um, I mean, and we, I don't know what we've done. We would have done the same thing, we might do anything in my future. We might retcon it or say, okay, well, different universe. Yeah. And that's fine. And that is what canon versus soft canon means. And for Star Trek, it is, you know, it's only, I say like comics. Like, I mean, yeah. like comics is just, mm-hmm. is just, uh, it's so many, so many diff- reboots of yeah, re- different universes. Yeah, it's like, it, which, which one's canon? Well, it's all canon, and they just kind of say, well, it's an infinite We're crisis. we right now. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's just, you know, or it's Earth uh, 315, 316, or whatever yeah. Marvel's main, main one is. And even within their particular universes, they invalidate themselves constantly. Yeah. Um, uh, what are we doing with 52 years now of Star Trek canon? Yep. It's, uh, something's going to be invalid, and it's, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, so Tim Hughes has a question uh, that I think is going to be our last question because uh, we're coming up on 6 o'clock here. Um, how much say in a character's development or story and dialogue do you allow the actors to have? Whatever they want. Um, some actors will just do whatever we, whatever we want. Uh, uh, one of the first things we say when an actor comes uh, to uh, record is, you know your character better than we do. You played them for so many years, and if there's something that just doesn't sound like the way your character would say it please say it differently and we'll just change the dialogue feel free to do that sometimes it's it's, it's more often it's like oh this is kind of a really chewy sentence to say and i can't really say you know yeah. parallel reverse polarity unifex something and they'll, whatever so whether it's techno babble or just just uh too much uh too much uh what's the word alliteration where it's like the same consonant over and over again yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. so uh, it's just that is alliteration yeah. but yeah um I knew something that had yeah, to do with words. There Usually go. math there I go. can handle, but the words are hard. Um, <laughs> that's why you have writers. Alex. <laughs> that's why okay. I have writers. Um, but the um, if they uh, if they want to change something, either because it doesn't it doesn't roll off the tongue easily for them, or it doesn't it doesn't feel right, um, it won't change the story. Um, we have our own we have the stories that we want to tell, but. Um, I could tell you that Robert Picardo playing Picard probably was the one who wanted to change the most. Playing the doctor, you mean? The doctor. What did I say? Playing Picard. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Robert Picardo playing Picard. No, Robert, uh, uh, Robert Picardo playing the doctor. Um, he uh, Apparently, he, he just has a, um, a history of doing that, and that's fine. He says, I, I'd like to say it this way. And and he would do three or four takes of the same line uh, and just not, not – but uh, and, and with his own different version, not just inflections per se, but just change it up. Yeah. Um, uh, um, I, I can't remember anything specific. He wanted to change some stuff. Worf wanted to. Uh, you know, uh, Doran had some things to change. Um, and uh, I remember the the, the one uh, uh, um, Kern. What's the Kern Kern act, actor? Uh, Kern. Tony Todd. Tony Todd. Tony Todd. Um, we went back and forth, and he wanted to call. Um, he said Kapla differently. Oh uh, like, yeah. He said Kapla. And we said, no, it's, it's Kapla. And he says, well, I've been saying it Kapla for five years. It's Kapla. <laughs> I said, okay, he can say Kapla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So, um, so, 
Yeah, uh, absolutely. If if they can bring some of their, I mean, that's they're the professionals. They, they if they can bring their own their own thing, their own way of saying things, then absolutely we want them to. And it's 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 good. That's just better for acting anyway. Like everything yeah. I've ever directed, like it, unless you're, you know, doing something like a play where you're beholden to the words, like it, having the actor say it how they would say it naturally just gets you a better performance. Yeah. Uh, it does. It does. And you know who does it actually probably like. Robert Picardo wanted to change uh, uh, some things in, in in general, but but Mary Wiseman probably ad libbed the most. Yeah, because she the way she just adds her inflections and woo and just these little ahs and, and just 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 the kind of the way that Tilly speaks yeah. is uh, is very much her, right? And I can imagine that the scripts that the writers write in the show are pretty you know general, and she just adds her own kind of ad libby kind of stuff, and it's awesome. Yeah. So it just it's it's really hard to capture that character and, and she just she just does it naturally. So yeah, it's Sweet. good. Well Al, thank you so much for joining us. Mm. I'm very excited for and there's gonna be more info um, on everything you guys are looking for in the upcoming weeks. Uh, we will have Jet on next week to uh, I'm probably um, Ian as well to talk about um, the uh, ship for the lockbox that we certainly didn't spoil in this episode. Um, we didn't spoil it. We didn't. We just we said didn't, it's going to be awesome. This is called the Emperor's Lockbox. We haven't told them anything else. No. They, they, they can figure things out on their own. Um, and, uh, yeah, more stuff coming up after that. So thank you very much for tuning yeah. in, and uh, we'll see you next week. I just wanted to say, you know, we've been talking so much about Mirror Discovery. Yeah. Just just real quick reminder, it is also our ninth anniversary. So That's don't, true. Don't forget about all the awesome ninth, you know, anniversary stuff that's coming, yeah. right? So you'll be seeing all, it's, it's, uh, this is a, a full season that we yep. with and an anniversary, so it's chock full of goodies. And in fact, so, I think um, if for these people who've been saying, "Oh, what, what will the Vulcan sh- scout ship look like? What will the Vulcan scout ship look like?" Um, I'm pretty sure, unless something, unless I've got something wrong with my schedule in the head, uh, you'll be able to see that for the first time on StarTrek.com this Friday. Um, so go there, check out that ship, and there goes the lights. I guess again. that's time to go. Yep. All right. Well, thanks, Al. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.